Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Applying Chemical Ideas. This is module 8 and video number 6 and we're going to be looking at precipitation titrations in this particular video. So in the last video we looked at gravimetric analysis and gravimetric analysis was where we were starting to shift from qualitative analysis which we used flame testing and precipitation reactions in order to um, identify the presence of particular ions through to trying to quantify those, trying to give us an actual measure of how much of a particular ion might be present in solution. Now one of our great analytical techniques that we've used is titration or um, volumetric analysis. So is there a way we can combine the um, often very accurate titration method um, to identifying different ions in solution? And of course we wouldn't be talking about it if there wasn't. We use this process um, known as precipitation titration. So that's what we're going to be exploring uh, in this particular video. So let's just have a quick look at precipitation titrations. So if we think about uh, titrations, we were using titrations to analyze acid plus base. In order to make sure that we were able to do this, we used an indicator. And that indicator was telling us about the end point, which was hopefully close to the equivalence point and not too far uh, beyond it so that we knew when to stop um, carrying out our titration. The difference here is that we're not neutralizing substances, we're actually trying to produce a precipitate. But if you do produce a precipitate, the problem is how do you know when you have actually reached the point where all of the iron that you're interested in has come out of the solution? So for example, if we were to investigate something like chloride ions in solution, then we might do this by the addition of a solution containing silver ions, so something like silver nitrate. Now as we add the silver nitrate to the solution that contains chloride ions, we should see the white precipitate forming. And that's fine and that gives us our qualitative measure. Yes, there were chloride ions present and we've seen them by precipitating them out with the silver um, cation. But how much is there? When do we know when to stop? How do we um, identify the point where we've got as much precipitate as possible without massively overshooting or without uh, filtering out the precipitate, drying it and carrying on? So, And even then, as we looked at with gravimetric analysis, there can still be some um, errors introduced into our procedure. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a method that we could use where we could just dropwise add our silver solution to our chloride ions and then know exactly when to stop because that would allow us to have volumes, to have concentrations, to be able to calculate numbers of moles and to work with the stoichiometry in the same way that we do with our titrations. Well, there is. The method that we've I've just sort of briefly talked through with you is something that we can actually carry out as a precipitation titration. So in this case, what we're interested in is the um, concentration of the chloride ions in solution. This is an unknown, so we need to work out what the concentration of these chloride ions is. Now because we know that they will precipitate the chloride ions in solution will combine with silver ions in solution to form silver chloride, we know that we will end up with a precipitate. What we don't know is how much silver we need to add and more importantly when to stop adding more silver. There's about three different methods that you can look at for precipitation titrations. This particular one um, that I'm looking at here is called the Moore method. And effectively, what we're trying to do is to um, the same sort of in the same sort of way we used an indicator in our acid base reactions to tell us when the endpoint was. We can use indicators that are either particular substances that change color 
or are uh, form complexes which also have a distinctive color and each of these different methods gives us a slightly different place where the end point will occur. The mole method is probably not the best, there is, a, there is um, a potential for overshooting but I think the important thing is that you're actually able to carry out this process and um, to, to sort of play around with a couple of these methods so you become comfortable with a um, titration as a process, but also be the difference between an acid base titration and a precipitation titration. So you can see the main thing that we're going to add as an indicator here are our CRO4 uh, 2 minus ions. And these ions are going to just slightly change the color of the solution. So the chromate solution is going to be yellow. Now we don't want to have too much of the yellow color in there because it actually may start to obscure this formation of our precipitate. So we have a precipitate forming there. Um, the, the titration is progressing. We're starting to get more of our white solid starting to be produced. At some point, the chloride ions will no longer be present in the solution. We'll have been able to precipitate all of the chloride ions out. Once that happens, we then get an interaction between the silver ions and the chromate ions. And when this happens, we um, have a, a compound that is formed that changes the color of the um, solution to this sort of well, it's a red color in the in the slide, but it's more of a reddish brown kind of color. This is what we get when we're looking at um, our endpoint for our precipitation titration. So we, in the same way that we use color to tell us when to stop carrying out our acid base titration, we likewise use color to tell us when to stop our precipitation titration. What we then do is exactly the same thing that we've done previously with all of our other titrations. What we will do is look at our value um, so we know exactly how much of our silver solution that we've added. That will give us our volume. Um, we will have used a known concentration so from there we can work out the number of moles and work backwards. The stoichiometry of this process is very similar, not identical, but very similar to the stoichiometry you use to solve problems of acid-base titrations, but the procedure is just slightly different. We've got that precipitate. Sometimes the precipitate can um, influence that um, end point, you being able to clearly identify the end point of each of these, and we need to make sure that the colors of the solutions and the um, color change at that point of uh, equivalence is going to occur um, in a visible way that we can we can identify where that is in order to stop that. Precipitation titration is a very important quantitative method. As it goes beyond simply identifying the presence of a precipitate to actually trying to calculate exactly how much of that precipitate there was and then of course to be able to work out how much of the um, desired ion which in this case is chloride ions that you had in your original solution. Obviously this is another one of these things that we need to get a little bit of a practice on so um, hopefully you'll get an opportunity to use this method in the laboratory and do some calculations. Thanks for watching.